Okay, hey, welcome. Uh, here's a lab that's meant to um, investigate the application of Newton's laws, and in particular, a study of centripetal force. So what you're gonna do is make something known as a conical pendulum. You're gonna use a meter stick and some chalk to make a circle on the ground with a diameter of exactly one meter. And then you just need to cut a length of string, and, um, well, it needs to be uh, up to two meters long. Okay, so a pretty long piece of string. And at the end of it, ideally, if you were here and we were doing this in person, you'd end up tying um, a lead weight to the end of it. But in order to do this at home, it's totally acceptable just to tie um, your keychain to the end of the string. Now, be careful then, when you measure the length of the string, it's not just from the end of the string to wherever you're gonna be holding it, it's from the, an estimation of the center of mass. Hopefully you have an understanding of what we mean about the center of mass to the point where you're pinching the string. So um, I'm gonna start by making a loop that makes it easy to attach. So the best way, if you wanna come in tight here, is to fold the string over and then just tie the simplest knot you can with a folded piece of string and then you'll have a nice loop that you can use to either continuously attach and reattach the weights, or if you're putting it on your keys, you can always feed it this way, and then once the string is cut, you can take the other end and tie it through, or I suppose additionally, in this case, I can just clip it on given the nature of my keychain, okay? So, uh, yeah, in the next segment, I'll show you how I want you to make your circle on the ground. Okay, so here's the instructions how you're gonna make a circle that's exactly one meter in diameter on the ground. A piece of chalk, and I have a meter stick, but you can do the same thing with your measuring tape. And uh, so I'm gonna um, just make a mark at the 50 centimeter mark. Just put a little line of chalk, okay? And then I'm gonna mark the ends. I'm going to rotate 90 degrees, put my meter stick at this 50 centimeter mark, and mark the end. Okay, rotate 45 degrees, and you know where I'm going with this. And rotate again. Okay, and then do one more set in between all these marks. And that should be good enough for me to get a pretty good idea of a circle. Then I can go in with my chalk and fill it out the rest of the way. And there you have it. Not only a circle that's one meter in diameter or 50 centimeters in radius, but I also know exactly where the center of that circle is. Okay, now that you've got your circle on the ground, you need to make a piece of string that's a little more than two meters in length. So I'll just sit it down, there's one meter, come back the other way, that's more than two meters. That should be more than enough. And I'm gonna take just a couple pieces of tape and uh, put them off to the side somewhere. I may need more later, so I'll keep that around. So now I want to measure from the center of mass of my keys And you use one of these pieces of tape. Get my string tight enough. And I'll put a piece of tape right at the 100 centimeter mark. So now I know if I hold this string 
right at the piece of tape that I know the distance from where I'm holding it to the bottom is a one meter long pendulum. Okay, so then here we go. This is the experiment. Get your feet wide. Keep your uh, hand above the center mark of the circle and then gradually start spinning the weight at the end of the string. Eventually, you get it going so that you can see it's perfectly mapping out, very well tracing the circle on the ground. And I'm not way up here, and I'm not so low that it's dragging across the ground. So starting over, right over the center, Gradually increasing the speed until it matches the tracing on the ground. Getting it just barely, I don't know, what would you say, half an inch above the ground at the most. And once I feel like I can keep it traveling on that circular path, then I give a ready, set, go. And somebody's gonna help me time exactly 20 revolutions. So maybe you can use this foot as the reference mark or something like that. So this would be ready, set, go. And we would have one, two, three, four, and so. And we get to 20 revolutions. I'm not gonna waste your time and show you all 20. If you take that amount of time and divide it by 20, uh, then you'll have the period of revolution. Okay, the next step then is to take the piece of tape and either slide it up the string or just grab a new piece of tape. And using your measuring tape or using a meter stick, then increase the length of your string by either 10 or 20 centimeters, whatever is indicated in the instructions of the lab. I'm gonna assume that I made this measurement with my meter stick, but you could imagine I did so. And then this is no longer one meter, but 120 centimeters, for example and I'm gonna do the same process. I'm gonna pinch it from that point, and now I know the length of my string. What hasn't changed is the radius of the circle, and I'll get it up to speed and do my best to trace the circle on the ground. And this time we'll see how much time it takes now that the string is longer. It should be a different amount of time. So basically if I've changed the length but kept the radius the same, I've changed the angle. I've made the angle that the conical pendulum makes from vertical a smaller angle. And we'll continue to do this, working our way up to greater and greater lengths. Now it's gonna to get to a point where you're not tall enough to do this. So, it's a bit dangerous. I don't need any lawsuits. Make sure you feel like you're on something that provides good balance. And when you're up to a two meter length of string, standing on the chair, it'll take a little bit of practice and a little bit of effort on your part, but you should be able to, even with a great length of string, match the circuit that's tracing on the ground. So that's it. That's what you're going to do for the data collection for this lab. Um, and uh, the rest of it is explained on your laboratory handout.